Cholerics are goal-oriented people, dominant, assertive, even aggressive. If you have a choleric in your circle of friends, sometimes you hear him or her saying things like, I ought to have achieved this at age so so and so, I ought to have done this, gone to these places. They are always driven, always looking for the next thing to achieve. This also transcends the way they view and behave towards sex. They tend to approach sex with direct and confident attitude. If, for example, a choleric man has issue with his marriage and then it happens that maybe his wife is unhappy because he is not satisfying her well on bed trust me if that choleric loves his wife he's going to do everything and anything to salvage the situation if he's not romantic for example he's going to become a romantic overnight just because he wants to salvage the situation remember they are achievers and to them, everything is like a goal. Even including their marriage, including their relationship. They want to win. They like to win. That is just the way a choleric is. Same applies to a choleric woman. If she's married and there is trouble or maybe whatever it is, she's going to do anything to salvage the situation. If she doesn't know how to cook, for example, she's going to learn how to cook. Learn how to do anything that she needs to learn. Just to be able to satisfy her husband and keep her marriage intact. They see marriage as a goal they need to conquer. Almost everything. You know, their desire, their passion and their drive transcends to every other aspect of their life, including their sexual relationship. If a choleric woman ordinarily wouldn't do the blowjob thing and it happens that that is what her husband likes and because of lack of that, he wants to go outside the marriage and you know everything is going haywire. Trust me, she will learn how to do that because that is just the way they are. Except of course she doesn't love the man that much or maybe she doesn't value the relationship that much. Now, someone will be like, eh, all this choleric thing, all this melancholy, sanguine, whatever. What is this woman they talk self? Why do we have to know how people behave? I mean, everybody has a right to behave the way he needs to behave or the way he wants to behave. Yes, that is correct, absolutely. But the reason why knowing these things is very important is because it's going to help every aspect of our lives. It's going to help you in your personal life, understanding yourself, understanding your strength and your weaknesses, understanding the strengths and weaknesses of other people, including your spouse, your friends, your relations, your family members, your siblings. Picture this. When there is a problem and you know the reason for that problem, I kid you not, that problem is already half solved. Why? Because you already know why it's happening. So you would know how to tackle it. Let's say, for example, I'm married to a sanguine man who has a problem of indiscipline. When he comes back from work from the sitting room, he's already dropping his shirt, removing his shoe, his socks. Everything is littered all over the place. And this is something that he has been doing for so many years and I sometimes just get so mad and he can't seem to stop this behavior. Now, when I come to the realization that this is actually a weakness, not because he's doing it to torment me or to stress me or to make me all worked up. If I understand that he does that because it is his weakness, then I'll be able to handle it better. I'll be able to be more sympathetic with him rather than being aggressive and quarreling all the time because he seemed not to be able to like stop doing that. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Understanding yourself, understanding other people is going to help us have a more mutually benefiting relationships, whether it's a romantic relationship or relationship amongst friends and siblings and family members. It is going to help you. I will not be able to outline all of your strengths and weaknesses in this video, but one of the biggest weaknesses of a choleric is their inability to connect emotionally. They can be emotionally detached from situations, from people. A choleric is not the person that you find easily crying. Oh, they beat me. Oh, this, this, that. Shedding tears. No. <laughs> like Tim Lahaye describes them, he says they are rocky cholerics. They are like rocks. They are immovable. They know they shake. And when they are pursuing their goal and someone is standing on their way, because they are not emotionally connected, almost they can crush anybody. I'm telling you the fact. They don't care who is standing on their way. Their eyes is always on the price, eyes on the goal. I need to achieve this. Who is standing? Who is that person? <laughs> this is not to make you skeptical of the colleagues or anything, but that is just the way they are. 
They are so goal oriented. It's like the blood that flows in their veins, such that when they are not achieving, when they are not doing things, they become sick. If a choleric man retires from his work, by the way, they don't always want to retire. <laughs> it's only a choleric that you find, even at age 85 to 90, still struggling to go to work, still trying to be active. Because that is the way they thrive. That is the way they live their life. If you retire him by force, most times they fall sick. And most times that will be the end of it all. Most of our world leaders, high achievers, go-getters are choleric people. As I said, they have the tendency to be emotionally not available. And when I'm talking about choleric in this sense, I'm talking about those people whose primary temperament is the choleric. I'm not talking about someone who has melancholy 50%, choleric 50%, and it's a 50-50 balance. No, I'm talking about someone who has up to like 70 to 80% choleric and 20% of any other temperament. They are like rocks. That is why all the temperaments, including the cholerics, need to accept Jesus into their lives and invite the Holy Spirit to come into their lives. Because it is only when I have the Holy Spirit that I will be able to conquer my natural weaknesses. These are inborn traits that you might not be able to control. No matter how much you travel, how exposed you are, how many books you read, the caliber of people you talk to, it doesn't matter. The only thing that can help you strike a balance is the Holy Spirit. Once the choleric has the Holy Spirit in him, he is now able to strike a balance between excessively chasing goals and being emotionally connected to other people, especially his wife and his children. Same goes for a choleric woman because now the same thing then be a choleric woman. If you marry a choleric woman, be ready to be a high achiever. In fact, if you're not achieving, she's going to be stressed out. She wants you to be the best. If you're at a job, even if you be security man, she wants you to be the leader at that job. She's going to push you. That drive is in them. She will push you in any way possible such that you can become a high flyer. You see all of these cartel movies that the boss has a wife that is always pushing him. She doesn't mind getting a hit. She's always going to be there for him, always, you know, being there, pushing him and challenging whoever challenges him. That is a choleric woman. That is what they do. It is not a bad thing, right? But the point here is when you have the spirit of God in you, you'll be able to strike a balance. Everything will make sense. You won't be the type that will be willing to off somebody just because you want to achieve that goal or because you want to get to the next phase of your life. And even if it means roasting a whole village, you know, mine. No, now you have the spirit of God and all of that is under control. No wonder after the resurrection of Jesus and when he was about ascending to heaven, he told his disciples that he was going to send them the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Let me look for that verse of the Bible. I think it's in, um, I think it's in John chapter 14, verse 26. King James Fashion, right? John chapter 14, verse 26, and he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. He shall teach you all things. That's the key word. He shall teach you all things, teach you how to control your emotions, teach you how to strike a balance. Teach you how to be able to connect to people. Teach you how to basically strike a balance. So that is what the Comforter does. That is what the Holy Spirit of God does. And every of the temperament I have talked about needs the Spirit of God to be able to check their excesses. Nobody is as successful, loving, peaceful, healthy as a man who has been able to conquer his weaknesses. Thank you so much for watching. If you're coming across my face for the very first time, you're welcome. My name is Wendy Zill. Let me know what you think about this subject in the comment section. And if you like this video, you can also click this video here to check out how the melancholies behave towards sex. I'll see you there.